Welcome to the Open3D Engine YouTube channel. I'm Alex DeMargin, a technical trainer with the AWS Game Tech team. If you're looking for a renderer that is real-time and compatible with most PBR material workflows, then O3DE's Atom Renderer might be right for you. In this video, we're going to explore what the Atom Renderer is, its features, and some potential use cases. Now, one last point before we begin, and this is in consideration for the open source nature of O3DE. The O3DE community is constantly making important updates to the engine, so make sure to check the description below for any updated content or videos. Thank you. The Atom Renderer is designed from the ground up to be modular and easily customized. Likewise, it's fully multi-threaded to support multiple parallelized workloads. It's entirely data-driven, with almost every feature and configuration defined and managed through JSON files, reducing time spent and recompilation. If a developer wants to customize Atom even further, they can update the modularized C++ code and APIs and recompile just the components they've changed, not the entire renderer. So what does this mean? It means that Atom's renderer isn't a monolith. It's a collection of different components that you can easily assemble integrate and extend without spending massive amount of hours sifting through different API documentation. You can work directly in JSON or automate with your own scripts and code. So how does this all work? Well, let's take a quick look at Atom's high level architecture and its core systems that make it such a modular and flexible rendering engine. At the lowest level of the pipeline, we have the rendering hardware interface, RHI which is the layer that communicates with all the graphic APIs and hardware abstractions. On the top of the RHI is the Rendering Pipeline Interface, RPI, which is the platform independent layer that render engineers will interact with most. The benefit of this design is that engineers don't need to be concerned with platform details as they build out new features. Instead, they can just focus on making great graphics regardless of the platform. Let's take a look at the Amazon shading language or AZSL. AZSL is an extension of Microsoft's DirectX 12's HLSL language with some extra tweaks to support Atom's inherent flexibility. We know you prefer the familiar in your day-to-day -day work. And likewise, we saw no need to dramatically reinvent shading language grammars. Here are a couple of key benefits that AZSL brings. Write your shader once in a unified language, which Atom uses to create native shaders for all the platforms it supports. No need to write different shaders for different platforms. Shader resource groups. Effectively, these are containers of shader resources. They're exposed in a way that's convenient and easy to work with across multiple shaders. The new shader permutation management system allows for more efficiency when processing shaders. Now, whether it's implementing new render techniques, switching render passes, or creating eye-catching shaders, Atom is designed to streamline all of these workflows so that you can focus on what you came here for, creating and rendering beautiful environments and characters to immerse your players, improve the visual fidelity of your simulations, and take your CG media to a new level. One of the ways that Atom does this is through the use of physically based rendering or PBR. This technique is used to simulate realistic interactions between materials and light. Atom supports artist-friendly PBR material types that can be designed using Atom's material editor or converted from popular content creation tools like Substance Painter, Blender, or Maya. Using the Atom tools, or your own, or both, you can create a standard PBR material that features a fully equipped metallic roughness workflow and has minimal performance limitations or you can create an enhanced PBR material that's a bit heavier on performance, but has additional features. In this video, we discuss briefly the Atom Renderer and some of its features. Stay tuned for future videos where we'll discuss more O3D related content. Thanks for watching.